What's up guys, it's Chris back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to add a lobby system onto my infinite multiplayer tutorial. A while ago, I posted a tutorial on showing you how to make a infinite multiplayer system in vanilla Scratch. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to add a lobby system on top of that. And again, like I said, this works in a vanilla Scratch. I am using Turbo Warp, as you can see by this icon, as well as this button right here. But this works in Scratch. I just use Turbo Warp because it's just cleaner and it has certain functionalities that allow me to work faster. But besides that, this works in vanilla Scratch. Anyways, that's it. Um, let's jump straight in. And again, please note, you must have code from the following tutorial. So if you look in the link in the description, there is a link to that tutorial. So first things first, um, we must create a new sprite and name it Lobby Manager. You don't have to name it Lobby Manager, but it's a relatively ideal name. I'm then going to hide this sprite because we don't actually need to see it. And then we're going to start our code. First, make a variable called Lobby ID. And this will be the ID of our currently joined lobby. Then we're going to go when green flag clicked. Then we're going to ask the user if he wants to host or join. And again, make sure to put this inside of a forever block. Then we're going to check it with an if statement to see the player's answer. I'm going to check if the player says host or host. I personally just do this that way. The player doesn't have to get it perfectly spelled correctly with all the correct capitals. It just, you can do lowercase or default. If the user says this, then we're going to set our lobby ID to a randomly generated lobby ID. And I'm going to do 10,000 between 99,999. I highly recommend you do these numbers because it gives you a multitude of lobby IDs while staying within five digits so we can always grab the lobby. After you do that, we're going to actually broadcast a message saying join the lobby. Once you actually broadcast that message, we're going to then stop the script. And we can basically duplicate all of this code and bring it down and change this from host to join. And I forgot to insert answer right here. And then instead of setting our lobby ID and all this stuff, we're going to actually ask the player what lobby he wants to join. I am going to put a note after this saying, if no lobbies are using this ID, then we'll make a new one. So if you type in a lobby ID that currently isn't being used, it will create a new lobby using that ID. Um, so do be warned of that, but it's not that big of a deal. If you just type in a proper lobby, you will join that proper lobby. And then instead of setting the lobby ID to a random number, we're going to set it to answer. And that's all we have to do for joining and hosting. Now we actually have to make this work. Come back to your player sprite from the previous tutorial, and we need to change a few things. First, down here, when we send our data in this code right here, we're going to, instead of uh, set data to this, we're going to actually join our lobby ID in the beginning. So grab another join app with banana block, put the lobby ID first, then join like this, and that way the lobby ID is the very first thing of our data packet. And also we have to remove all when green flag clicks on all these blocks here. And instead of using when green flag clicked, we're going to see uh, do when I received joined lobby. This will make this code only run once we're actually in a lobby and that way it won't break anything. After that, we need to, where we check for data and check for players and stuff, we have to make sure that this data is actually coming from our lobby. Example right here, we check for players and then we add them to our game. But if we do this instantly, we'll basically add people from other lobbies into our match. So we must first make sure that this player right here is actually from our lobby. So to do that first, we now need to change the starting index to six since we have another data before this one or before the player ID. So yeah, make sure to change the get data on index from um, one to five to six to five. And we're going to put all this code right here inside of an if statement and reinsert it. Then we're going to use our custom block above this if statement, going from 1 to 5, ultimately retrieving our lobby ID. And then we want to check if this value is equal to a certain value. And the value we're looking for it to be equal to is our lobby ID. So basically, if this data packet is from our lobby, and this data is, um, if this is the same player, then it'll create that player. And you can actually duplicate this code and remove everything inside of it so you have this if statement because we will use this again in the clone down here. So down here in our clone, we're going to change get data index from 1 to 5 to 6 to 5. We're then going to grab this full if statement and insert it into the if statement right here. So get data on index 1 to 5 so it retrieves our lobby ID. If the value is equal to our lobby ID, then this clone can check this data. And it should look like this. 
do know I will have this project in the description or comments. Um, so if you need to compare line by line all the code, feel free to do that afterwards. And then the final thing to do is come down here and change these values. So right now, or before we had um, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 equal to our X and then Y position. But since we have five more letters or digits in the beginning, we must update this number by five. So instead of six, it should now be 11. And instead of seven, it will be 12. And ultimately just increments upwards like so. And voila, you completely have finished your lobby system. Now to test this since Scratch has set cloud servers have been down, you can either post, post your project on Scratch and go to TurboWarp and paste the link in, or you can use the HTML fire and run multiple windows on your same device. So I now have three windows open using uh, TurboWarp's HTML fire. And in this first window, I'm going to say we want to host. And as you see, it generates a lobby ID and I can now move around like usual. I'll then boot up this project right here, and instead of hosting, I shall join. And it's going to ask which lobby ID you want to join, and we can see our lobby ID over here, which is 86284. So I'll type that in over here, and make sure you type it in exactly, and then I'll hit enter. And as you can see, a player joins on both names. In this third window now, I'm going to run it, and I'm going to say host. And it's going to create a new lobby and join it. And as you see, this player is not in these two people's lobbies. So I can move around over here, but nothing's happening on this screen. And there's nobody in our lobby right here. And that's all you have to do to have a fully working lobby system. I hope this helps you guys out and maybe makes you guys play your games with your friends. And yeah, if you guys want to support this video, please consider liking it as it helps me out a ton. And if you guys have any, any other video ideas or any more multiplayer things to add on top of this, please let me know down in the comments. I try to read as many as I can. But yeah, that's it guys. And I'll see you in the next one.